David had been exiled to Brazil um, after the House and American Activities business. And he was never happy there, you know, there were, there were many problems he felt. And then he was offered a, an opportunity um, in Israel. Uh, and of course it was a new state at the time, you know, I mean, and also of course he was Jewish. Um, maybe he saw this, you know, as a, as a good opportunity. And um, he'd only been there a couple of weeks when he was invited to a party and Cyril was there. Okay, you can pick it up for he's only been there for okay. a few weeks when that stops. All right. So can, you, can you sort of keep your eye line towards me? Oh, okay, yeah, yes, yeah, instead good. of looking, okay, yeah. yeah that's yeah, good, yeah. no, we don't need to, uh, Okay. that's it, okay. okay. So basically he was invited to a party. He was invited uh, to a party and Cyril was present and uh, she spotted him from across the room and immediately was interested in this young man. And um, my feeling it was, it was much more than a physical attraction. She actually saw something in him and she said within no time she felt that um, she'd been given this responsibility to look after this man and to look after him for the rest of his life. And in fact that's what she did. I would describe Cyril as a very motherly person. And in the photograph, um, she, uh, the wedding photograph, she does look rather matronly, I would say. Um, and, and certainly Dave does look younger than, than Cyril. But um, yeah, I, I think that was a uh, big characteristic, that she was motherly, that she wanted to look after people. She liked to feed people, you know. Uh, she was very sociable and including everyone, and, and which was rather different from Dave himself. The mother really was um, an absentee mother, in that for a long time uh, she really couldn't take care of the two boys or run the house because she um, had a mental illness. And then um, she was absentee physically in that she was institutionalized. So really, uh, David and his brother did not have that sort of nurture, you know, from the mother that, uh, you know, you would expect. So yes, I think all his life, um, he, he was looking for a mother. And in fact, Melba Phillips, uh, one of the early girlfriends said, you know, uh, she felt Dave had two great talents. So one was for uh, being miserable and the other was for getting people to take care of him. And so he was, he was, he, you know, and, um, and they did take care of him, you know. I mean, I've seen him sort of surrounded by women who wanted to take care of him. Well, the, there was certainly that sort of childlikeness in him and helplessness, you know. I mean, he couldn't do anything for himself. So, I mean, yes, he would run around and make a cup of tea and, you know, get his coat for him. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was that sort of thing. Women really uh, wanted to take care of all his needs. They, they did. Sarah's family were um, medical people. Her father was a doctor. And I guess 48, I think, when the state of Israel, you know, came into being, um, I guess many uh, professional Jewish people from all over the world went there to help out. And um, that's what her family did. And Cyril herself was a trained physiotherapist and uh, she put in that into practice, you know, when she arrived in Israel because there had been an outbreak of uh, polio amongst children. And so she worked with these children who had been afflicted with polio, you know, as a physiotherapist. And um, I guess the conditions were quite primitive, you know, a lot of the like, hospitals were really tents, you know, big tents, and she slept in, in, on the ground in a tent, you know, that's how they lived.
Shortly after they married, um, Dave felt he might have made a mistake. I think he felt sort of trapped, maybe smothered, you know. Um, but, OK, I, I think there was a lot of ambivalence all, all his life in Dave, in that, you know, whatever sort of choices he made, he's always questioned them. Well, did I do the right thing? You know, what if I'd gone to this place instead of that? Or, you know... Um, and I, I'm sure it was the same with the wife. Well, have I married the right person? <laughs> so he was, he was a warrior and, uh, yeah. So, uh, yes, uh, shortly after they married, I think he did, was questioning what he had done. But Cyril said that, you know, he was free to leave if, if that was what he wanted. There was a rapport between the two of them, and certainly they um, they sort of shared books in the sense of, you know, one of them would find something interesting and would pass it along to the other. And in fact, this, of course, is how um, Dave got involved with Krishnamurti, because Saral had found a book in the library and, and brought it home and said, you know, this sounds very interesting and the sort of things that you're saying. So, so yes, on that level, they certainly did. Cyril wasn't just sort of his wife and companion. I mean, she was the nurse, she was the, the social secretary, you know, she organized everything. Um, I'm sure he never had to do anything like make a doctor's appointment or buy airline tickets or anything of that nature. Cyril looked after everything, every aspect, you know, of, of his life. And I think, I think she was happy to do that to a large extent. Occasionally she'd be a little resentful, but by and large, yes, that she saw as her job in life. Every year we, we would get together at the Bailey Farms um, in New York State. And uh, the first thing that Cyril did was she had to go to the supermarket. And we'd only be there for a week, 10 days, but she had to go to the supermarket. And there were these sort of enormous American shopping carts and they had to be filled to the brim. And David Bohm would get so annoyed about this, you know. Cyril, you know, there's only the two of us who, who, who <laughs> so who's going to eat all of this? <laughs> he actually moved into a place, one Evelyn Place was the address. And in fact, it was sort of um, a community of intellectuals. Um, they, some of them were uh, refugees from, from Germany. Um, but a person who also lived there was Einstein himself. Um, I guess it was a big place and they rented out rooms and they, it formed quite a community. Uh, Thomas Mann would visit, you know, Einstein would play the violin in the evenings, and, you know, Jacob uh, Bronowski would visit. I mean, it, was, it must have been very sort of stimulating for David Bohm, this, this boy from Wilkes Barre. <laughs> yeah. The daughter of the house, in fact, uh, Hannah Lowy, um, she became very close to, to Bohm, and I think he proposed marriage to her at one point. Um, she was, in fact, she, she hoped to be a documentary filmmaker and she was living in New York, but she would often come home at the weekends to visit and, um, yes, they, they became engaged. He was always socially awkward all his life and uh, I, he never lost that. Um, he was a person who was not comfortable in his body and, and that showed, you know, in his gestures and the way he would sit and so on. Um, as regards Hannah Lowy, I mean, she said, well, what was he like as a man? She, she said, he was fine at the macho stuff, but he didn't have any eros.
I would say absolutely no ego. I mean, he was a very, very humble person. You know, not a trace of, of arrogance. You would never guess who he was, you know. You wouldn't sort of look twice at him, you know, if he was with a group of people. Um, no, he was, he was shy and timid and, uh, and as I say, very humble, very. I think he was accustomed to calling Cyril um, as he left Birkbeck College every evening. And um, this particular day, he picked up the phone, spoke to Cyril, said, I'm, I'm on my way home. And then he said, um, you know, I feel I'm on the edge of something. He said, it's quite tantalizing. And those, I guess, were his last words, because by the time the cab arrived at his home, he was dead. I asked Basil this question, you know, his colleague, and he didn't know at all. He had no idea that, you know, the feeling of being on the edge of something. Um, I suppose one interpretation could be that he was having some sort of premonition and in fact he was on the edge of something, he was on the edge of death. So I guess through Dave, of course, she would have met an enormous number of people and important people and, you know, and, I, and that aspect of it she loved, she loved it. Yes.